Hello and welcome to the Planning Commission Roundtable. I'm your host, Pete Murphy, Chairman of the Fairfax County Planning Commission and the Springfield District Planning Commissioner. On this edition of the Roundtable, we're discussing the site-specific plan amendment process, or the SSP. My guest, Alina McDonald, Director of the Planning Division of the Department of Planning and Development, and Graham Owen, Planner with the Planning Division of the Department of Planning and Development. Graham, Leanna, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. I know Leanna has been on for you. This is your first experience. Uh, I did it about two years ago, but oh, well, very uh, happy to be back. So oh, good. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you came. Let's just uh, begin with something. Uh, what is an SSPA? And, and let's go on from there, but let's clear that up to define our terms. Uh, the site-specific plan amendment process, um, or SSPA, is one of the processes that we have in the county to review our comprehensive plan. We have um, generally four different types of plan amendment reviews that we undertake. Um, one is the countywide and um, policy plan reviews. So some examples of those would be updates to our housing element of our policy plan. We um, completed one earlier this year and have one underway now. Our public facilities section of the policy plan and our environment section of the policy plan are both currently um, under review for various amendments. Um, we also have area-wide studies where we look at larger areas in the county, um, such as the McLean CDC is a recent example, um, transit station areas such as West Falls Church. Um, uh, Lorton is a current study underway, Lorton visioning process, and we're about to undertake um, a third phase of the Fairfax Center area study. Um, so we have those county-wide amendments. We have our area-wide studies. We have plan amendments that run concurrently with rezonings, and then we have the SSPA process. So we have kind of four buckets under which we, we update our comprehensive plan. And the SSPA process is a cyclical process where um, every four years we review um, amend potential amendments to the comprehensive plan. The county is divided into um, North County districts and South County districts uh, based on the supervisor districts. Um, and we spend about two years with each um, section of the county. And um, what's different about this process from the others is that anyone can submit a nomination to look at a change for a parcel of property um, and the land use recommendations for that property. Um, and, so, um, and so anyone can submit a nomination. It's reviewed by staff and community task forces and then brought forward um, to the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors for consideration to be placed on our comprehensive uh, plan amendment work program, which organizes the work that's undertaken um, related to the comprehensive plan in the planning division. Yeah. So reminiscing, your department used to be called the Department of Planning and Zoning, and mm -hmm. now it's the Department of Planning and Development. development. So mm -hmm. you're into the development phase of this, so you're getting in deeper than, quite frankly, where you were before, where you were just limited to the zoning aspects of it. And the comprehensive plan is perhaps one of the more or most important parts of the planning process. I call our comprehensive plan the citizen's plan because mm -hmm. there's always a lot of citizen involvement, and we're going to touch upon that in, in, uh, in, in a later moment. Uh, talk about the four themes that you have uh, articulated to the community. Mm -hmm. um, part of this review, um, what, we're, what we're beginning is a retrospective of the site-specific plan amendment process. We've completed the North County cycle and the South County cycle um, amendments are under review. And what we're working on now is um, a review and discussion of the process. And we're at the beginning of that. Uh, we recently had a meeting with the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors and provided a presentation where we reviewed some themes um, of some initial feedback that we've heard. And those revolve around community engagement, um, the timeline involved um, with the SSPA process, both the community and staff um, resource demands and, um, and discussion about the nomination criteria, the nomination criteria themselves. You want to, anything you want to add? No, I think uh, Leanna hit the, hit the nail on the head. Yeah, there's, there's been some things that we've noticed over the past four years that we think, you know, there's some good things about the process and things that we certainly want to retain, you know, moving forward. But there's those themes that Leanna was hitting on are, are really things that we think, you know, can really kind of yeah. propel, the, propel the process and, and make sure that we're doing things in a, you know, okay. a really a well done fashion. And who, who can put forward these nominations? I mean, you're going out to a large audience, and we'll talk about that in a minute, too. But I guess you have to be. You have to have a process to bring the people into the process. Then once they get into the process, you have to do something to make the process come true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah, and exactly. maybe Graham can speak to some of the outreach we, we did at the beginning of the process to let folks know about, about the upcoming cycle and how you, yeah. submit, um, how you submit. 
Yeah, so yeah. One, one thing I'd say about who can, who can participate, um, one of the features of the process that we have right now is that anybody can submit a nomination. So this is something, you know, this is, as you mentioned, the citizen's plan. It's something where um, participation from the community is critical and it's probably the most important kind of aspect of community planning. So anybody as a part of our process can put forward a nomination to change the recommendations in the land, the land use plan uh, for either a site or a collection of sites through SSPA. So you don't have to, as a part of this, um, you can, you don't have to own the property. You can submit a, a nomination for, you know, if there's an area that has commercial development on it and the plan calls for, you know, it to be co commercial in nature, you can put forward an idea like, I'd rather do mixed use development on this pro property. So maybe having a combination of retail on the ground floor, of apartments above, something where the vision changes for the community. So anybody can put forward uh, a nomination right now. We do have some rules in terms of the, the types of nominations and the kind of the timing of those. So if it's an area that's been looked at in the past five years uh, and where a, an amendment has been adopted in the past five years, those areas are generally ineligible. But beyond that, we have a fairly, fairly, a fairly open process that anybody can get involved in, uh, even from the, the nomination period. Mm -hmm. um, once, once the nominations are in, we do have a community task force that gets formed within each district. And what they do is they screen the nomination. So this is looking at kind of high level policy review to see you know, which of these ideas um, really should be looked at in, in further detail by the community, uh, the planning commission, the board of supervisors and county mm -hmm. staff. So that screening phase is, is critical in terms of helping us to prioritize the, the nominations that come in and determine which ones should, uh, should advance for further review and further mm -hmm. study. Well, I think one of the more important things, because we have, we're having a lot of emphasis on the planning commission and on the board uh, about community engagement. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, issues we had to task, uh, tackle rather was during the COVID stuff, we were cut off the air and we didn't have in-person meetings was the fact that we were sort of abandoning the citizens. That proved to be wrong, I might say. I think that we found that going to the electronic media and not in person, uh, we had large, we had the meeting on the uh, on the uh, rev revision of the uh, zoning, zoning ordinance. ordinance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean we were here till two fifteen in the morning, and that's mm -hmm. certainly, in my opinion, not cutting the citizens out of the process. And it turned to be it turned out to be very beneficial, and I think we did a very good job there. What what techniques are you going to use? Maybe you touched on some of them to get the word out to the citizens of Fairfax County besides the Planning Commission roundtable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, um, we, um, we look forward to participation by community members in this retrospective process. Um, part of our plan is, um, is to invite the community to participate in a survey that is now online on yep. our website. Um, and, and that survey um, asks particular questions about the SSPA process and how folks may want to participate so that we can get a little bit more information about preferences for participation in community meetings or task force meetings or other ways to participate, whether those be online or mm -hmm. through virtual meetings, um, like you mentioned, um, to ensure that we're reaching as many people as we can and um, sort of taking a look at our, at our SSPA process is, um, is focused on a sort of a task force model. Um, each of the supervisor districts has a, has a task force that's put together to, um, to lead the community review of these nominations with staff and with the larger community. And so we, um, we're looking for opportunities to expand that model and to reach out to folks um, uh, whether it be through earlier engagement, um, maybe before the nominations come in, um, to kind of explain the process. We've, we did that um, ahead of this process, but are always looking for ways to, um, to reach out to more folks um, earlier in the process. And then maybe there are some opportunities for more targeted engagement during the process outside of that task force model mm -hmm. as well. And to your point about, um, about participation in virtual meetings um, you know, during this, this pandemic, uh, we've definitely seen, um, seen great participation in, in um, our virtual meetings. We, we moved um, as quickly as we could to um, virtual platforms and our planning division staff and DPD staff have become pretty fluent in running those meetings and ensuring folks can, can participate. And I would expect that, that, that we will continue that. Um, it provides other opportunities for folks that may not be able to come to a meeting at a particular location on a weeknight. You know, you can call in, get the information, participate and, and follow up. So I would imagine that that would, that would continue as well. What kind of nominations are eligible to be included in this process? Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk through some of them? Yeah, so mm -hmm. essentially once you're in the supervisor districts that we're focusing on, so with the 2019 through, uh, through the present, we've been focusing on the South County District. So that's Springfield, Braddock, Mount Vernon, Lee, 
and uh, Mason. One, and Mason, Mason, yeah, of mm -hmm. course. And so once you're in one of those districts and we're focusing on that section of the county, um, as long as you have a nomination uh, for an area that hasn't been studied in the past five years, uh, and it's a site, it's not dealing with a countywide system or a countywide change, you know, in terms of policy, um, you can put in a nomination for that for that area. So that's kind of a feature of our process is that it's very open. It allows people to uh, really kind of get involved early on in terms of putting in nominations. So we see a lot of stakeholders that are um, from the, from the community, you know, property owners that just want to have a different. Um, different future for their for their particular property. Um, we also get some developers and land use attorneys that are involved in the process and are, are looking to do a development, you know, kind of in the more short term, um, and require a comprehensive plan amendment change. So we kind of get a, a real gamut in terms of uh, the types of nominations that come in. Um, a lot of them are mixed use, a lot of residential right now, since the residential market is very hot. Uh, but there's there's a lots of different types of types of nominations, just dependent on uh, market forces and where you are uh, in, in relation to the county. Yeah, and you brought up uh, the last process, which was 2017, 2018. I believe we had you or your representatives mm -hmm. on the show to do that. What kind of nominations came out of that process? Can you be just a little specific on that? Sure. I think with the 2017 North County cycle, we had 10 nominations that were submitted and screened uh, as a part of the, the North County cycle. And then of those 10, that we whittled it down to about three that were, um, that were put into the implementation phase and got worked, uh, worked on with community task forces. So those three include the ICPH, or Innova Center for Personalized Health, um, at the, uh, and that's in the Providence District at the former ExxonMobil site across from Fairfax Hospital. And so they were looking to do a health and innovation district um, in their, on their property. Uh, and that was a, a very large scale, large scale urban, um, urban scale um, development that's um, that was rezoned at the rezoned concurrently with the plan amendment. So, had a, a lot of uh, a lot of interest uh, from the community, and was uh, I think that was adopted I believe in September of mm -hmm. 2019. Um, with that, we were also looking at a um, a similar similar in terms of the the types of uses, um, but but just across the Beltway inside the Beltway. Uh, Fairview Park, which is a, an office, mm -hmm. uh, an office park, uh, it has has been there since the 80s, and one of the things that they're trying to do as they try to build out the rest of their office park is look at alternatives in terms of uses. So, right now it's predominantly or was predominantly planned for office, and so they're really trying to look at how can we bring in some vibrancy, some some retail, some uh, residential uh, to help support the retail that's there, and try to make this more of a, an active active environment uh, at all at all hours of the day. And so that, that was another amendment that came through and was adopted in uh, September or October of 2019. Uh, the last one that um, uh, Leanna mentioned is the West Falls Church uh, plan amendment. That one uh, was on a, a slightly different time frame, uh, but, but came out as a result of the North County process and actually was adopted uh, just a couple of months ago. Uh, but that's looking at a new transit-oriented redevelopment of uh, a couple of parcels surrounding the West Falls Church metro station. Mm -hmm. So uh, those three of our you know they're they're all completed at this point, so we are kind of officially mm -hmm. officially done with the North County <laughs> cycle. <laughs> Learning from them, though. Sorry. Learning from them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And how, how to mm -hmm. do it this this yeah. time because now we're in what uh, 19, uh, 20, 19 to twenty one. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and and are the nominations coming in now have they been screened? They've, they've come in and been screened, um, and the nominations that moved forward um, past the screening phase. Um, we're put on our work program in January, and so um, our staff is working through the um, the more formal review of those, and that's when we review land use impacts, um, such as transportation or school impacts, environmental impacts, and get some additional community input. Um, so we're in the process of doing that review for the South County uh, nominations that were added to the work program. And as part of that, as we um, gear up for the next cycle, uh, which would start next year, um, that's where we're um, opening up this retrospective so that we can get feedback from the community and stakeholders such as nominators, task force members, um, staff and others, planning commissioners and board members, um, kind of about those pieces of the process that we may want to adjust um, to, to help with, um, with clarification of nominations that come in, you know, um, and the timeline, um, mm -hmm. to take a look at the timeline. Um, as well, and, and as we as we talked about before, opportunities for um, additional opportunities for community engagement. Yeah, you talked about retrospective, and mm -hmm. I think that part of that last program mm -hmm. is a valuable part of this program right. because you learn 
sometimes the tough way what what you should and shouldn't do the second time around and you mm -hmm. do that even through the third time around and the fourth time around um, how can the community get involved we already discussed that is there any more specific areas that you want to talk about about community involvement because that's a as I say, a big, big project mm -hmm. now, you know, one Fairfax and uh, what we're doing to balance uh, more than we did in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, how can you cope with that? I mean, mm -hmm. is, that, is that something you can deal with? Absolutely. So I think right now, since we're still doing the implementation phase for the South County SSPAs, the community can absolutely get involved and we invite them to attend the task force meetings that we have. Uh, we do have three task force task forces as a part of the South County cycle, one in the Mason District, uh, one in the Lee District, and then one in the Mount Vernon District. So there's ongoing meetings. Um, we had one earlier, earlier this week. We've got two that are going on uh, next week. So uh, the community can absolutely come and attend those, uh, attend those meetings. Um, if you want to get interested, or if you are interested in any of the nominations and the plan amendments that are moving forward, uh, this is a great time to, to come into the process if you haven't been involved to date. Um, Regarding the, uh, and so that's kind of the primary, the primary means of, of getting <clears throat> community input during, uh, during the process. Yeah. You can always email the, the board, the planning commission, county staff, happy to talk to anybody that's, um, that's got questions about any of the plan amendments. Um, as a part of the retrospective, uh, one of the things that we do have going on right now is that public input survey. So uh, we, I, yeah. can, I can give a URL at the end if uh, folks are interested. Sure. But what we do have uh, is, a, is a community survey where we're trying to gather people's input on the process itself rather than just the plan amendments that are going through uh, because we are looking at uh, potential modifications to the process uh, coming into next year before we kind of do all this all over again. So um, we think that there's um, some of the themes that we had identified earlier in the program uh, really are going to um, hopefully shine through as a part of that retrospective and we'll have some uh, potential modifications. Uh, but we want to make sure that the community's uh, voice is raised as a part of the, the, the process changes. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add to that or he he did yeah. very well. He did very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, um, I, I don't really need to add much. I would just note that we'll be working through um, the board members' offices to also get yeah. the word out about the survey um, through this program. Thank you for inviting us. Um, our website and um, and working through our current task forces as well to get the word out about um, about this opportunity for input as well as from task force members and nominators. And we'll give you that information mm -hmm. too at the end of the show yeah. that you can run mm -hmm. when you go out to these uh, these communities, the, yeah. the, 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 uh, do the districts have task forces? I think you mentioned mm -hmm. task force. They, had, yeah. they appointed a task force like back That's in right. the old days with the comprehensive yeah, plan. Yeah, um, when we did APR, the APR, APR, plans yeah. review, there yeah. were district task forces. And this follows a similar model where each district sets up a task force to, to do their review with us. How about the, the uh, process nominations coming in from res for residential uses or commercial uses? Uh, is that, uh, how's that balancing out? Yeah, I would say with yeah. the South County in particular, since those are the ones we're, we're working we'll on right, yeah, yeah. right right, this second, um, there, there is kind of a mixture. Um, there's a mixture predominantly of, of residential, you know, looking at options in the plan for taking properties that have, you know, maybe just one or two types of uses that are recommended and adding the, the ability to do either more residential or introducing residential where it's not currently planned. Um, we do have one transit-oriented redevelopment uh, that's ongoing at the Huntington Metro Station, so that's yeah. looking at, you know, a, a whole a whole district-level plan, uh, and, and uses to complement it. Um, the other thing I mentioned is that we do have uh, two houses of worship in the Mason District that are looking at ways that they can expand their um, expand their mission through new community centers as well as residential uses, affordable housing, uh, as a part of those uh, plan amendments. So there is kind of a mixed bag. Um, less so on kind of like the new office development, I would say. Um, that, that doesn't seem to be something that has been put in, you know, uh, put in to a large degree as a part of the, the South County cycle. But uh, so we are seeing more and more kind of residential and more urban, uh, urban uh, style uh, transit oriented uh, redevelopment proposals moving forward. Planning is a big piece of what we do, as I've said that before, and a bigger piece of what you do, actually. Um, how is it balancing out? Uh, with new proposals now, uh, as back in the, the first to go around, in terms of nominations yeah, that came yeah. in, um, yeah, the um, I think um, Graham's reviewed some of the specifics of nominations that have come in. You know, we had, um, I think we had um, 36 uh, nominations come in for this full cycle, and about 17 made it on the work program. Um, so um, we definitely see interest through this process, and we want to make sure we uh, provide an avenue for the community 
um, and stakeholders to submit nominations um, and have and have those reviewed. I think one of the um, one of our goals is to ensure that we we have that opportunity and we also have an opportunity to talk um, with the community and the, the planning commission and board about um, about prioritization of our work program in general um, in terms of the SSPA nominations that then become plan amendments and also our larger policy work. Um, and to your to your question about kind of what's what comes in um, what we um, what we do and what we also hope to do in the future is you know if we see um, patterns of you know types of uses that are becoming um, more prominent in these nominations you know we can say okay we should take a look countywide at something mm -hmm. you know if some particular um, planning issue comes up that maybe we should um, say okay this this is happening let's look at this at a policy level um, so that we can um, can address something countywide if necessary if we see um, mm -hmm. interest in certain types of uses um, and this didn't necessarily come out of SSPA but uh, a mm -hmm. number of years ago we saw interest in things like data centers um, and so we worked on a policy plan amendment um, that that uh, helps to provide guidance in the review of those when they come in for their zoning entitlement um, so that it's not a site specific review there it's countywide guidance um, that that can apply so that's just an example of, of trends and we want to make sure we're um, you know we're staying ahead of some trends and kind of addressing things um, at a countywide level as as we can as well and what other kinds of planning processes are you working on now mm -hmm. in conjunction or mm -hmm. simultaneously yep. with uh, SSPA. Yeah. So because have, I know you have more to do than just. We have a lot just, going on. Yeah. <laughs> we have, um, in terms of planning studies and plan amendments, um, we have SSPA, and then we have um, a, a study underway in Lorton. Um, we're called, it's the Lorton Visioning Process, and we have a, a task force that was put together there by um, the Mount Vernon supervisor. Um, we're going to be um, beginning the Fairfax Center, uh, this, this area where we are sitting mm -hmm. today, um, generally um, phase three for that. Um, we just finished two large ones. The McLean Community Business Center was a multi-year uh, planning study, and Graham mentioned the West Falls Church Transit Station area, um, which came out of, part of that came out of SSBA. We have a number of countywide amendments underway too, an update to our public facilities section of the policy plan. Um, we're looking at preservation of affordable housing, um, an amendment um, that would be an amendment to our housing section, and then we've got two underway now to our environment section of the policy plan. Um, so we've got those those kind of countywide reviews underway, the site-specific reviews, and then um, a number of reviews that are running concurrent with rezoning applications um, with property owners as well. Um, so we're busy. Uh, we also have um, we have staff that focus particularly on um, issues such as environmental reviews, heritage resources reviews. We've got two um, historic overlay district plan amendments and zoning amendments under review now. Um, one in the Providence district and one in the Mount Vernon district. So, um, so a whole host of expertise and, and updates um, to, to respond to, um, to board, board initiatives and countywide priorities as well. Anything? Let me just uh, let me just add on to that by mm -hmm. saying you're busy sounds to yeah. be an understatement, uh, and <laughs> yep. that may be the greatest understatement we've had on the Planning Commission roundtable. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left, and mm -hmm. I won't always turn the that time over to the folks that are here as you are here. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything we would like to talk you would like to talk about that we haven't talked about yet? There must be something. Like I would just something I would just something. reiterate that the, the, the uh, community survey is open, so that yep. is something that we are really hoping to get the community's in, uh, feedback on. So. If you're interested in um, being a part of the next, you know, the next cycle with SSPA and having a, a voice in terms of how that looks, um, I would just direct you to publicinput.com backslash W2004. So that's our survey mm -hmm. when we were planning to have it open uh, through December the 3rd. Um, we might need to extend it if we need to, but um, that's, our, that's our cutoff mm -hmm. date for right now. We'll put that up on the website mm -hmm. after we finish the broadcast so everybody will have it on their screen and be able to get to it because this seems to be a crucial element mm -hmm. to make your jobs more successful and get the citizens' participation in something that is very important to them. And if they don't realize mm -hmm. that now, we hope they will realize that before you draw the line and say, that's it. <laughs> so get it in if you want to have a participation in this process. Uh, Leanna, mm -hmm. uh, Graham, thank you very much yeah. for coming. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for, thank you for inviting us. Yeah, and, uh, and thank you for joining us. Uh, at the Planning Commission Roundtable. We're doing this for the first time, so I've got to get used to going back and forth. Uh, if you like any topic that would be discussed on a future roundtable, mail or email your suggestion to one of the addresses now appearing on your screen. <clears throat>
especially that survey. Until then, I'm Pete Murphy. See you in the next Planning Commission Roundtable. And thank you for coming.